tutorial we'll be going into how to use JZ trees and the Y simulation tools inside of Houdini and then how to reskin it all back up together. So to begin with here is the model I made earlier. This is an example file I'm supplying to all you guys. Uh, it's of a gum tree I built and we're going to be using this uh, Megascans asset that uh, will just travel through through the tree. I'm just going to flag this part here. There we go. Yep, so this is just going to travel through the tree and it's going to make the tree interact and get out of the way and bend. Our leaves are also animated. So they react into wind. You can see they're moving. They're very small, it's a little hard to see. For now I'm going to turn this off just for speed purposes. There we go. So the first step we need to do is we need to turn this into a skeleton to use inside a wire simulation. So when we're actually doing this, we don't need to simulate the whole tree. We can, when we do that, it can really slow down in Houdini. And if you're looking for absolute precision, then yeah, you can simulate every every branch and and twig, but um, that that can get very slow. So what I like to do is I like to choose up to what level do I want to simulate. So I'm gonna, I'm actually just gonna simulate this section here, and then I'm gonna reattach all this stuff back to the simulation after. So with this part flag, I'm going to create a JZ tree skeleton. There we go. And I'm going to wire that into the, the purple display. There we go. Next thing I do is I'm going to create a group. Plug it in. I'm going to call it root underscore group. I'm going to call it points. And I'm going to make it a bounding box. And I'm going to increase this to about a size of two. Zoom in, I want to make sure it's working. Yep, they're highlighted. Maybe I'll make it a little smaller. That should be fine. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a YS, a JZT YS skeleton. Plug that in. And now we need to tell it to what to pin to the root. Like, what do we want to be kind of the root and the base of this? And that's going to be our group that we just made. So root underscore group. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the trunk width scale from 50 to 100 and the branch width scale to 100 as well. And the rest we're going to leave default. Next we're going to create a null. We're going to name it outwire. And we're going to flag it. Following we're going to create a dot network. I'm just going to call this wire dot. I'm going to copy the wire, the wire null, go down inside the wire. Stop. I'm going to create a wire object. I'm going to plug into the SOP path just here, that path to our wire. I'm going to go over, over to our material, physical. I'm going to change this just to 10 and leave the rest of default. Next we go to the elasticity tab and we're going to change this to 1000000000. Which should give us perfect. Next, we're going to change this from the next one, the linear damping constant, from zero to ten thousand. The angular sprint constant from ten to one hundred thousand, and the angular to ten thousand. And we're going to turn off adjust for mass. Before I'm going to go to go, go to collisions, I'm going to turn off collide codependent. I'm going to go to the visualize tab. I'm going to visualize the width color. Following, I'm going to create a multi-solver. Plug in the wire object to the multi-solver. I'm going to create a wire solver. Plug that into the multi-solver on the right side. Then I'm going to create a pop drag. And plug that in as well. On the pop drag, we're just going to leave everything as default. And on the wire solver, we're just going to Go to the capabilities and enable plasticity deformation. Following, I'm going to make a gravity node and plug that into the multi solver. I'm going to make a ground plane, a merge, and a static object. I'm going to plug them in like so, and then to the output. On the merge, I'm going to make sure I go to the relationship, sorry the effect relationship and change it from this to mutual. Let me see if we get a good representation of our tree. On the static object, this is where we need to put our collider. So I'm going to go back up to here. 
and grab this out sphere null I made earlier. I'm going to plug that into the static object in the SOP path. Following, I'm going to go down here, I'm going to turn off friction, dynamic friction and dynamic friction scale. I'm going to turn on use deforming geometries. On the RBD solver, I can change from defaults to volume. And it's going to set a preview so I can see what we're getting. Great. I'm going to go up one level quickly. I want to change my sub steps from 1 to 4. And let's give this a go. This will be on this side because this rock is moving left to right. Let's hit play. We can see this settles pretty quickly. It's pretty fast. Our rock starts moving. And collides with our tree. Obviously trees aren't really this bendy, but this is just if in case you want an effect similar to this. In real life the tree would very much break with a force like this is applied to it. Great, so next step is we need to attach get this out of the dot network and attach our missing branches, then put this back to a kind effects friendly skeleton, then deform back onto the geometry. So let's go up a level out of the dot network and let's create a dot import node. Let's create, grab our wire, our wire dot network, put that in, dive in, just grab the name of our wire objects as well. And I'm going to change this to fetch geometry from dot data. From dump network, so I'm going to now create another skeleton node just here. Now, a cool trick with the skinning node is you actually don't need to grab all the skeletons for the skinning to work. If I only grab up to here and use that to generate wind and other effects on this following geometry, will follow the previous generation. So, I'm actually just going to grab two levels down from here, I'm just going to grab this one here and plug that into the skeleton. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to tell, need to know what what is missing from this this skeleton and this skeleton to then reattach it to to this one. So I'm going to create a blast node, and I'm going to wire up the same level, and then when I modeled this, I gave this some custom groups. So I called this one at the time mid O2, and this one just mid. So on this blast node, I'm going to delete non-selected, and I'm going to set this to mid and mid O2. And now we've grabbed the branches that are missing that we want to attach to our initial Y simulation. So now we're going to bring these all together. To do so, I'm going to create a, a JZ tree anim transfer node. On the first tab is the animation. On the second is the missing splines, and on the third is the skeleton we want to be able to transfer this animation onto. My capture frame is going to be 1. I'm going to flag it, and I'm going to hit force recapture. Great. If I hit play, we will now see that these are attached to the tree. I turn this rock on just so we can see it's working. Simulation's all feeding through. It's reattaching. And playing back just fine. Now, another thing you might want is that that's great, but I want wind and other things to affect my tree while I'm, while I'm working. Either you can do it in the Y simulation just here, or we can apply the JZ tree wind parameters now. So to do that, I'm going to just drop down a JZ tree wind wind node, plug it into the first one, and we already have a. Oh no, we don't. We don't have a because we did it earlier. So I'm going to copy this group node. I'm going to plug it in to the skeleton node. And now we've got our 
root group all in there. The following unchanged my start frame just to 5, a little pre-roll this time just to 10. I want to add a little bit of directionality just so I can see it's working. Let's go to frame 1 so we can see. So I turn this, oops sorry, let's go to frame 15. So you see it's working, it's adding a bit of directionality, 0 0.5 is fine. Gust strength 0 to 0 0.325 and speed to 0 0.85. I'll go down to the turbulent speed and also turn that up to 1. And then I'll just leave the rest at default for now. Now the next thing is, if you, you'll notice when you do this, your, your collisions won't actually match up anymore with your, um, with your skeleton. Because of what we just did, oh, it's going to re-simulate quickly. Because of what we just did, we've added extra deformation on top of the simulation, so we, we need to be able to, to pull back that deformation when this is colliding. So, what we can do is we can plug in that deformation into the right input in the mask object. And we can, use, we can use this for a number of things. We can use mask objects to increase or decrease the amplitude of wind. So if you want like a specific gust at a certain time on a tree, uh, you can plug the object into here. Go to the mask properties and give it a distance threshold and the amount you want it to multiply by. So we actually don't want the wind affecting it when this object is passing through at the time. So I'm just going to set that to zero. And we're going to set my distance threshold to 1.75. And I want a little bit of a fall off, so I'm going to set that just to 3. Now when we look at it, we can see that... Turn this back on. The rock doesn't go through the tree. And the collisions are all working great. Now we need to actually bring this all back together. So I'm going to quickly do a file cache. I'm going to quickly skip this part. Alright, as we can see, our simulation is almost done, and that's only taken a minute. So this is a very fast simulation technique, and it reapplies the missing geometry very fast. I'll take on load from geometry, and just like that, all work as a treat. So now we need to reattach the geometry and leaves to our new skeleton. So just like before, we're just going to create a skinning node, a JZT skinning node. I'm going to plug in the geometry to the right side, just down here. Let it process. It's going to fail because we haven't plugged in the rest of the stuff just yet. Might just skip that. Plug in the leaf instancer. And then I'm going to plug in the Y simulation as well. Now we need to make sure we've got the wire cap the capture frame set. Yep, one is good. And plug in the skeleton. And then we're going to let the skinning node process. Great. I'm going to create a quick merge node, so we can preview it's all working. I'm going to put the deformation and our object together. And we're going to just make sure that it's all looking good. Yep. Looks great. Fantastic. The object collides with our tree, pushes it over, everything is skinned correctly, and reattaches. And also don't forget, we can always return on our leaf animation at any point. Back to our leaf and so just tick that on. And then on our JTT skinning as well, tick that on. Give it a second just to reprocess. What this is doing in here is it's going through every branch and every leaf and it's generating procedural skin weights. So this does take a little minute sometimes, but I'd be very surprised if it ever takes more than 30 seconds. Great. And now our leaves are animated. Great. And our rock deforms our tree on impact. Alright, thanks guys. I hope this tutorial has been enjoyable.